God bless you for tuning in to this channel of the way of salvation. As I promised the other time, I told you that I will be dealing with some important subjects and one of them is called demons. So I will be talking about how demons operate, how demons operate. And to begin with, I want to address, I want to address one important question for you. I know most of the questions people ask is, do demons exist? Do demons exist? And the answer is yes. Yes, they do. The fact that you don't believe in the existence of something does not mean it's not there. If you sit in a, maybe in your country and you say you don't know there's a country or a city called Timbuktu, it doesn't mean Timbuktu is not there. <laughs> so in the same way, demons are very much around. They are in existence. They have been around since the creation of this world. Demons are around since God created this world. Who are they anyway? Who are they? Demons are fallen angels. Simply put, they are fallen angels. So if if the demons are fallen angels and are around since the, the, the creation of this world, then you cannot deny their existence. You cannot deny their existence. They are around. The Bible talks about them from the Old Testament to the New Testament. The Bible talks about them. And in the New Testament, it is very interesting that the Lord Jesus was the first person to talk about demons. He was the one to let people be aware of demons. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 22, let's read it a little bit. Let me read it. Matthew chapter 7, verse 22. The Lord Jesus was speaking, and from verse 21, he was saying, not everyone who mentions his name will enter the kingdom of heaven. Then in verse 22, he continued to say that many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name? You see? And done many wonders in your name. So I'm only interested in that, that, that that sentence cast out demons in your name when he says people will cast out demons some false prophets will cast out demons in his name it means that demons exist and he as the leader of the church as our lord and savior was the one who brought about the awareness of demons in the new testament so you cannot deny them they are wrong it is very important and I will later on prove to you why it is very important for the church to know more about demons. You see? So they do exist. And when the Lord was also casting out demons, at that time, during the time of the, of, of the Lord's day, the Pharisees, the, the, his hearers, the people of his day, they knew also of demons. So when you go to Matthew chapter 9, his hearers also knew of demons. Matthew chapter 9, verse 34. Matthew chapter 9, verse 34 says, It says, But the Pharisees said, He cast out demons by the ruler of the demons. You see, the Pharisees said, The Lord was casting out demons by the ruler of demons. It tells you that the hearers of the law, even the Pharisees knew that demons existed. So you cannot deny them. When the Pharisees said he was casting out demons by the prince of demons, it means that you should be aware. You should know about demons. So if those days they knew, then today we should, we should know. If those days they knew about demons, then I don't see any, any reason why you should stay adamant 
to the subject of demons. You should know them, that they are around. And uh, I want to also talk about their mode of operation. So the first question is answered as to whether demons exist or not. I've answered that for you. They do exist. You cannot say they don't exist. They do. They are wrong. The second question is, how do they operate? How do they operate? Demons can operate outside, in and outside the human body. They can operate outside the body or inside your body. When, when they are, because they are in existence, their operation is either outside or inside. So they can stay somewhere and remotely control your actions or they can be in you and you act for them. Anybody who is not on the Lord's side, like I said, they are fallen angels. So if you are not on God's side, then you are on the side of demons. Because in heaven, they were only angels. And through Satan's deception, demons came about when they fell. So if you are living in this world, and you, you are not on the Lord's side, technically, automatically, you are on the side of demons. So demons are operating through people who are disobedient, disobedient to God. If you are not on God's side, then demons can operate in you. Then you are open to their inhabitation. You become a channel for them if you don't believe in God. They can operate through any human being who is not on the law side. Whether you are black, whether you are white, whether you are yellow, whether you are blue, demons can operate through anybody. They can operate through a man, they can operate through a woman, they can operate through an adult, they can operate through a child. They can operate through any human being. So get that one straight. Now, they can operate through your friends. They can, they can go through your friends. They can also operate through this, this one. This part is very hard to swallow. They can operate through your parents. That is what is shocking to many people. If demons are in operation, they can operate through your parents. They can operate through your mother. They can operate through your father. So, it means demons are everywhere, operating through every person. If you are on the face of this earth and you are not on the side of God, when I say on the side of God, if you don't believe in God, then you are open for them to come and operate inside you. That is what you need to understand. You see. And one thing I also want you to understand is that, is that talking about their operations, demons don't like human beings. In fact, they, they jealous human beings so much so that they have said they are not the only ones who will be going into the hellfire. They will draw human beings with them. So they don't like you as a human being. That is why I told you it is very important subject for you to know. If someone stays around and says, I don't like you, I want to draw you with me into the, into the mud, then it is very serious. You have to find out why he wants to draw you with him. That is why we are talking about demons. They don't like human beings. Why? You see, God, when God created Adam and Eve, they were around. They were in existence. They were around. But the jealousy stems out of the, the things God said. Multiply, subdue everything. You can see that God gave man the power to dominate. And when demons were around and they heard these things, ah, it was like jealousy. They were, they were really jealous. That I see, we were with you in heaven and then we came down and now you have given these people power over us. That was the jealousy. So they don't like human beings having power over them. So they are doing everything in their power to take the power back and to bring you down. That is why you need to know about them. They don't want you to be with God. It's just like uh, somebody who has been banished from a, a city. When you go to some, some countries in the olden days, when, when, when somebody commits a crime, a very serious crime, then the person is banished from that uh, country or, or, or that village. So when you are entering that village and you see the person who has been banished from that village and you, you ask him of the directions to go into the, the city, 
and you, you, show, you, you tell him, can you lead me into the city and show me this place? You think the person can do that? No! In the same way, if demons were in heaven and they, they, they are fallen uh, to this earth, how do you think they can help you go to heaven? They will do everything in their power to block you. That is why you need to know them, their tactics, how they operate, so that they will not draw you with them. They don't like you as a human being. You see? So try to understand this fact. And don't allow yourself to be used by them. You see? That is how it is. It is. They, 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 they have nothing good to offer you. So you don't have to say, I, I, I just live my life and I don't care if demons are in existence and I'll give, I'll, I'll give them access to my life. They have nothing good to offer you. They are jealous about you. They don't like you. So if you are serving demons, if you, if, if you are hearing me or seeing me now and you serve demons, it is my advice that you do away with them. Come to the side of Jesus because they have nothing good to offer you. That is how it is. Okay. Then the next question is, are we free from demons? And let me personalize it. Are you free from demons? The answer is yes and no. The no, let me first talk about the no. No, because if you are not with Jesus, you are not free. Anybody who does not have Jesus Christ in his life and, and lives holy, is not free from demons. So long as you don't live holy, you are not free. They can easily live in you, control your actions, and bring you along where they want to be. So nobody is free if you don't have Jesus in your life. So that is the first answer. Nobody is free. So I'm going to tell you two things that will let you be free from demons. The first answer or the first thing to do in order to be free is to run to Jesus. Why? I will later on show you that he is the only one who has power over demons. So if you don't come to Jesus, you are still not free. You have to run to Jesus. And how do you run to Jesus? You run to Jesus in a perfect church. In the church that Jesus is present. In the church that belongs to Jesus. Why am I saying that? Demons have their churches too. They have, they have established their entities and they call it church too. So if you want to be free from them, then run to Jesus, pray to him, for him to direct you to a very good church of his presence. That is why he sent me to you to teach you and to make you aware of them so that we set you free from them. I thank God for his anointing over my life that I have power over demons. I thank God that I have power over demons. So when you run to Jesus in our church and, and, and you come to become, you become a member, I can assure you that every demon that is in your life will be cast out in Jesus' name. So run to Jesus. If you, if you run to Jesus, then you can be free. Then in that, in, that, in that instance, no demon can touch you. If you run to Jesus, no demon can touch you. Because Jesus is the master of demons. Amen. If you are only a church goer, demons are not afraid of you. If you are only a church goer, what I mean by that is that many people think when they go to church, then they are, they are Christians. Christianity, as I always put it, is a way of life. Living to please the almighty God. So if you just go and sit in church and live otherwise after the service, it doesn't make you a Christian. So if you are afraid of demons, run to a holy church. Our emphasis in action power is holiness. I'm teaching people to live holy and, and, and be with God in eternity. So if you are afraid of demons, and you run to a church that is being uh, led by one of their false prophets, you are in big trouble. It is running from frying pan to fire. So come to a very good church 
that has holiness and Jesus in it. You see, if you if you be in a good church like this, then no demon can touch you. You see, that is what I'm talking about. There are many uh, people who go who go to church, but but true Christians are few. We have a lot of church goers, but true Christians are few. So be one of the chosen few. The Lord said, many are called, but few are chosen. So try to be among the chosen few that no demon can touch you. Now, when you run to a good church, the next thing that can make you free is that the pastor in charge should be anointed man of God to set you free from the demons in you. Because you have seen that there are demons, and maybe you will see that they are in you, and you run to a good church. It is the responsibility of the pastor to cast out demons in your life. I, 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 I have a big problem with the churches of today. That the, the subject of demons are even not being addressed. Let alone cast the demons out. The subject is not being addressed. We are not talking about demons. So I can say that people are comfortably sitting in church with demons. In the other way, in the other words, in other words, demons are comfortable in people because they are in churches that are dead. So try as a person who is afraid of demons and want to be free from them to be in a church of the presence of Jesus. If, if you belong to a church, that the Holy Spirit is not present to cast the demons out of your life. I tell you, it is very, very unfruitful. So be in a church. It is the responsibility of the pastor. Why am I saying that? God calls his people, anoints us with the power over demons. I will prove that to you in the next episode. So do your best never to be in a dead church. Be in a church where the power of the Holy Ghost is present and the pastor is anointed to cast out demons. I've always said being a pastor is not just talking. Today it has been a fun. It is a sort of fashion for people to call themselves pastors. Some others also are looking for money. So they say they are pastors. I can thank God that in, in Ashim power, demons can never live in anybody who is willing. God has endowed me with the power over demons that if you run to him, surely he will cast demons out from your life. I don't understand why you should be in church and still demons will be tormenting your life. If we can run to Jesus and they are still tormenting us, then it's better I stay at home. <coughs> if demons can still have power over my life, even if I run to a church, then it's better I stay at home. So this is what I want to bring to you today. These are the small, small answers to the questions you may be having on your mind. In the next episode, I'll be dealing more of these things. But be reminded that demons are in existence. They don't like you as a human being. So you also have to find a way to be free from them. Run to Jesus and to the perfect church of his presence and your life will never be the same. God bless you. I'll see you again next time. Let me pray with you. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name for causing your people to listen and to, to view this episode. I bring them in your presence. May your holy hand touch them to understand so that you establish them in your presence that demons will not have control over them. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Tell your friends about this program. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you have been enlightened. To hear more, you may subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell to see more videos. Pastor Kukudatsi has written a very informative book called How Demons Operate. Grab yourself a copy to know how they operate and know how to liberate yourself from demonic oppression. To stay in contact with us, you can reach us through these details. God bless you.